Hey everyone, welcome back to To Be Like Christ for uh, our Bible study today. We've got a short Bible study. We are going to talk about 1 Samuel chapter 27, and there's only 12 verses here. So uh, hopefully we can get through this in five minutes. There is a free PDF, which you're seeing on the screen, but you can also download it to BeLikeChrist.com for free and share it with other people and use it to study with other people. So go check that out. Okay, on our outline, we need to first answer our question, when did these events happen in history? Well, this would be between the years of approximately 1015 BC and 1010 BC. Saul has been the king of Israel for quite a while now, and his reign is coming to an end. He's he's chasing David down. We're going to talk about David living in the land of the Philistines, and we're told that he lived there for a year and four months. We've actually met all of our characters. First is David. Second is Saul, who's the king. David's going to be the next king of Israel. And then Achish. I think it was chapter 21 where we met him. He was the king of Gath, which was a Philistine city. Who do you remember was from Gath? The very famous Philistine. Goliath. Yes, Goliath. Goliath was originally from Gath. As far as our map goes today, we can pinpoint one of the locations, but the second location is somewhat uh, somewhat unknown. So David moved to Gath, which was a Philistine city, to escape Saul. You can see Gath on the map there. Uh, to Well, it's kind of on the eastern side of the Promised Land, towards the south in the land of Judah. And then the king of Gath gave David and his men a home, a town called Ziklag. Ziklag's location is unknown, but a lot of archaeologists think it may have been 10 to well 15 to 20 miles south of Gath. All right, let's consult our outline on page number two. Verses one through six is our first section. David flees to Gath to escape Saul. David got tired of hiding from Saul, running from him in the wilderness, which has been pretty much the topic of the last several chapters, and he decided that he was going to go live amongst Israel's enemies. And that would be amongst the, the Philistines, who had been the longtime enemies of Israel. David took his family and his band of about 600 men, and they went to Gath. Now, when, fall, fall, when Saul found out that David was in enemy territory, he was like, yeah, I'm not going over there. He gave up pursuing David. So, in a way, David's plan worked. Achish who was the king of Gath, welcomed David, probably because he was Saul's enemy, right? Anyone who is Saul's enemy is his friend. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, I think the saying is. So he welcomes David, and he gives him the town of Ziklag as a home. All right, section number two now, verses 7 through 12, David raids neighboring nations. David and his 600 men began raiding the possessions of nations kind of around where they lived, the Gershurites, the Gerzites and the Amalekites. And during these raids, David did something that I think was a bit questionable. David's men were instructed to kill everyone, men and women, so that no one in the, the areas that they raided would, would be alive. There wouldn't be any survivors to report on David's actions. He didn't want people knowing what he was doing and where he was doing it. And I think part of the reason he wanted it covered up was because when Achish, the king of Gath, would come to him and ask him who he had been raiding, David would actually lie to the king and tell him that he had been raiding his own people, the Israelites and their allies. And, you know, maybe he was doing this to gain favor and gain the trust of the Philistine king. Achish bought into it. He trusted David, and he was confident that David was always going to be his ally because D David had chosen, or so he believed, to turn against his own people, and so Achish and the Philistines were kind of all he had left. And so that is 1 Samuel chapter 27. Interesting chapter. David ends up in enemy territory, and then he begins these raids. And you'll notice that there's not an actual instruction from God that he should be involved in these raids. And that kind of takes us into our application section. Most Bible commentators and interpreters, and I think that I would agree with them, understand this period of David's life as kind of a, a sinful stain on his otherwise godly character, that this is not something that he should have been involved in. That tells us something about the Bible. We see this in other places as well. The Bible doesn't whitewash its characters, which in a way is a mark of its authenticity, that it's, it's genuine history. The men that are talked about in the Bible were real men with real faults, just like the men of our modern day. The Bible isn't some kind of fictional story where all of the heroes have unshakable resolve and unblemished character, right? No, these are, these are real people. It's real history, which records the real lives of imperfect men and women.